happy Tuesday, everyone. Um, so I'm gonna come back to this picture, this slide right here. I actually want to start with soil minerals. So if you would go and get your five subject notebook um, in your science section and just turn to that next clean page and put soil minerals at the top and we'll get started. Again, just like yesterday, um, I will circle or underline what you need, the notes you need to write down in red. Okay, and feel free to pause the video as you go along to take these notes. So, have you, when we're looking at rocks, have you ever wondered why some rocks are smooth while others are rough feeling? So this happens because rocks are exposed to weathering, and weathering is caused by wind, water, and ice. And when rocks are exposed to weathering, they are broken down into smaller pieces. So what I would like for you to write down so far is I would like for you to write down um, the question at the top, and then I would like for you to write down these first three bullet points, these first three notes, and then let's talk about smooth rocks for just a minute. So smooth rocks, they are very old, and they have been weathering for probably thousands of years um, because they're so smooth. And that smooth rock was probably bigger than what it is now. And rocks usually begin as big boulders, but through weathering, they get smaller. So the process of rocks weathering down is gonna be, they go from a boulder to what we call a cobble, or maybe cobblestone, as you've heard, to a pebble, to a granule, and then to sand. So I would like for you to write down this bullet point as well, and this also, this sub bullet point, right, the order of which these rocks weather. And most rocks are composed of minerals, and those minerals just become part of the soil as they weather down. And the rocky part of the soil is made up of different sized particles, and those particles are going to be sand, silt, and clay. So I'd like for you to write down this last bullet point as well. Okay. So now let's spend some time talking about sand. So sand, I'm sure if you've been to the beach, you know what sand feels like, what it looks like, but let's talk about it um, in the context of soil for just a minute. So sand particles are larger than the particles of silt or clay, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. And sand is not as weathered as silt or clay, which is why it is larger. It does have a gritty texture, and water runs through it uh, very quickly, so it's porous. And porous just means it has lots of space between its grains for water to move through it. And it is light in color because it does not have a lot of nutrients in it. So what I would like for you to write down is this first bullet point, write the title to sand so you know what you're reading about. And then let's write down the second one. Don't forget to write down the definition of porous. Okay, we're going to want to know what that word means. And again, we know what color it is, but if you feel like you need to add that, you can go ahead and add that to your notes as well. Now let's talk about silt. So silt can be found in some soils and it's smaller than sand but larger than clay. So that means silt has been weathered down um, finer than sand. And it feels like a powder and is often carried by streams or rivers to other places where it can help make new soil. It is actually a brown or black color. And it holds some water but it's not as porous as sand. And this should be But it is not as porous as sand, and it but it does have more nutrients than sand. So what I would like for you to write down from this is write down silt, so we know what we're talking about. I would like for you to write down that it's smaller 
than sand but larger than clay what it feels like what color it is and that it holds more water but is not as porous as sand if you would like to write down the other three bullet points you absolutely may but those are the four that I definitely want you to have written down so let's spend some time talking about clay so it is the smallest rocky part of the soil it is very fine so it has a sticky smooth or like slick texture when it's wet it is difficult to get water through so it does hold water very well and it is often yellowish or brownish in color because it contains iron and it's not porous so there's actually very little air for it to go through so what I would like for you to write down from this is write down clay so we know what we're talking about write down this first bullet point that it's the smallest what kind of texture it has when it's wet and let's write down its color and that it's difficult to get through and that it's not very poor so really just copy this whole slide down um, so when it's because it's not porous and there's so little space for air that means there's kind of also um, no space for water to get out like because it holds water so well so one thing that, that does mean is that when you feel it and it's holding that water or retaining that water it's gonna feel very clumpy almost so I'm gonna put a little arrow and come down here and then what I'm gonna do is so you can see this I'm going to put a box just so you can see what I'm writing because I know this background my text is pretty simple but when it's wet it will feel clumpy and I don't know if maybe you've noticed that like if you've ever worked with clay or felt clay but yeah when it's wet it's gonna feel kind of clumpy um, that would be a very good way to describe it this sticky smooth and slick is just gonna be that texture of it okay so um, it's important to know the minerals in your soil when determining what to grow because by understanding the properties of the soil texture and the minerals, you can determine what's going to be best to plant and what kind of plants will do well in that particular soil. And just the picture I have here just shows some different kinds of soil and you can kind of see that different plants are um, growing and surviving in these different types of soil and the different environments so your classwork for today i'm going to show you what it looks like it is this and i actually have this passage um in the powerpoint which i'm getting ready to go back to so don't cut this video off just yet but you're going to read this and then you're going to answer these five questions using evidence from your passage and it's again i mean pretty straightforward um so real quickly, let's go back and let's go back up to my first slide for dirt and soil. And this passage is just talking about the, like, the differences and the similarities to dirt and soil. So we just got done doing comparing and contrasting with dirt and soil. And this passage is kind of going to be doing the same thing. So as you read it, kind of be paying attention to how is dirt and soil similar and how are they how are they different okay so again this is going to be part of your classwork for today but i did want to show you the passion and kind of talk about it remember we're thinking about um how 
are they similar? And how are they different? Along with learning like the specifics of dirt and the specifics of soil. So again, that can be found in your Google Classroom under classwork. I hope you have a great, as you finish up your work, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow.